Hi there, it's Nicole here today, and I am sharing a couple of cards created with the Spellbinders Small Die of the Month Club Kit for March. It's this set of frames, and you actually get eight dies, so you can use them together to make frames like I'm gonna do for both of my cards here, or you can use them to layer the pieces together, use them separately, so many incredible ways. I'm gonna combine the frames from the March Small Die of the Month Club with the Build a Panda die collection, which is probably my most favorite from the more recent Spellbinders release. I think this panda is darling. You can make the panda sit or stand. For the frames, what my initial thought here was, I am going to make standing pandas because I need them to be holding onto the frame. I want to create these frames like you see um, that you can use for like photo booth things where you hold up the frame and you take a picture. That's my thinking here. So I made these frames like these pandas are holding them getting ready to have their pictures taken. Um, just kind of fun, whimsical. I definitely went with bright rainbow colors here. The pattern papers I'm using today are all from the Lawn Fawn Really Rainbow Paper Pack, one of the newer, brand new collections from Lawn Fawn, all really bright rainbow colors. I am gonna kind of ground my design or my scene here with an aqua cardstock strip behind that. This is the Mermaid Lawn Fawn cardstock, and I did already pre-die cut all of my components just to save some time. Truly the most time consuming thing of the card projects here is the die cutting and embossing. What's amazing about these dies, both the small die of the month frames and the Build-A-Panda is that you die cut them and then run them back through with the embossing sandwich for the Spellbinders machine and it embosses the detail on all of these dies. So the frames end up looking very ornate, very detailed. The pandas look very detailed. It's just amazing. For my greeting for this card, most of both of these cards, with the exception of the stamped greetings, everything is die cut. I love that. So the first card here, the die cut, or the, pardon me, the stamped greeting is from the Simon Says Stamp, You Got This, uh, greeting stamp set. I've mentioned this in several of my videos kind of here more recently. This uh, stamp set came out, I believe last fall. It is one of my most used and most loved greeting stamp sets. Fantastic for encouragement cards, thinking of you, and just everyday cards. You make life beautiful. That is a great sentiment for so many different things. So let's go ahead and start putting this card together now that I have all of the components ready. First, we're gonna take the aqua strip, water down some dis uh, picket fence distress paint, and then splatter it with a small paintbrush all over the surface. I felt like the background was just a little too plain. Um, it needed a little something, but not a lot because I had tried just putting my scene together on the pattern paper and I think the pattern was too busy. So this solid cardstock strip is really gonna help kind of ground everything and bring your eye to the wonderful die cuts and not the pattern paper. After that has dried, I did let mine completely air dry. I am going to go ahead and take some score tape on the back of my greeting strip and pop that down there along the bottom edge. Then I'm gonna take some scrapbook adhesives, foam adhesive squares, trim them into thirds, and I'm gonna frame up these awesome March small die of the month frames with my foam adhesive squares. This is gonna make them dimensional. How I got these frames, I will show here in just a little bit for the second card more about how I taped the frames together and ran them through my die cutting machine, but I ran them through at the same time, meaning I took the two dies that are the same shape. There are two for each frame, four different frame styles. I took the two that went together, taped them together, ran them through my die cutting machine, then I flipped them over and did the embossing sandwich through the machine to get the incredible embossing detail. 
We also need to really quick pop that black strip up there along the top edge. I put it down too low to begin with, so I had to move that up a little bit. And then we want to place the panda's legs on the background and then pop up the frame. And then in order to do that and have the, the head kind of look correct, we need to pop up the head with some foam adhesive as well. Once we have that, we can go ahead and take the arms and adhere them to each side of the frame so it looks like the panda is kind of has its arms wrapped up around there, holding the frame up, smiling for the picture. Definitely a more whimsical type of style for these frames. I think they there's a ton of examples on the Spellbinders website where these have been die cut from gold foil cardstock. I have to tell you guys, I did that myself because I was so excited when I saw the samples. I had to do that too, just to see how awesome it looks. And I will be sharing those on a project, probably shared on um, social media, Instagram, Facebook, things like that on my channel um, later on because they do look absolutely stunning from foil cardstock. They look like gold gilded or silver, um, you know, frames, just so super awesome. So if you've got some nice heavyweight foil cardstock, I recommend definitely trying these frames out with that because I think you'll love it. Now to give my frames a little more depth and dimension, I took my black soot Distress Ink Reinker Tool. I actually didn't even ink it up with fresh ink. I don't even know the last time I used my black set ink. I did not want my frames to turn black. I wanted them to have a little bit of that aged look to them. So I used my tool to just kind of gently ap apply that ink to the frames before adding them to my card. So I've got one panda completely assembled. The bow that comes with the Build-A-Panda looks great as a bow tie, like the first panda is gonna be sporting there. It also looks great as a hair bow, either on the ears or at the top of the head. We're gonna do top of the head for the final panda on this card. And I filled this card with pandas. Um, originally, I thought I'd only use two, and I have a boy and a girl. And as I really looked at it, I really liked the look of three frames. I'm a huge fan of um, odd numbered type of things. I do think this would be really darling, or the pandas would be really darling, um, a boy and a girl together for cute little love themed cards or whatever. But for this, I just really felt like three filled the space so much nicer. So I went ahead and went with those. All the cardstock here is from Lawn Fawn. From left to right, I'm using Chili Peppers, the red, Sugar Plum is the purple, and Peacock is that beautiful teal color. And then Mermaid is in the background with Black Licorice is the black cardstock strips. The pink bow in the hair is the Ballet Slippers cardstock, and the orange bow tie is fake tan. I am using a little Ranger multi matte medium to add all the layering pieces for the panda's face now. So around the eyes, the tips of the ears, the nose, and then the little white for the panda's eyes is from the face die cut. I made sure and kept all those teeny tiny little pieces and I'm going to put those back on the pandas. Tiny little dabs of Ranger multi matte medium. It's gonna dry nice and clear and matte so won't have any funny shine going on there. And just add those to the pandas to really finish them off. I'm a big fan of taking a white pen and then adding detail. I think it adds so much character to the images, so we're gonna do that here. I've created another card that I'll link to at the end of this video with the Spellbinders Build a Panda dies because I'm telling you guys, this is my favorite die collection. Um, from them, kind of my current favorite. I just think the pandas are so darling. You guys know me, I'm a huge fan of critters, um, so I'm always drawn to them. And these pandas are just so, so cute. On the frames, in the corners, I'm just gonna add some black accents with a jelly roll pin, kind of like the frame is nailed together, I guess is what I was thinking here. Gives a beautiful finished detail, just any little thing you can do like this. This is a fairly simple card design. Lots of die cutting and then just assembling. But any little thing you can do like that really dresses it up and gives it a more finished look. 
I'm gonna finish these pandas with a, dot, a little dab of glossy accents on each of the noses. Then we're gonna take a white side fold card base, pop this panel right on there, and that will finish up my first card using the Spellbinders Small Die of the Month Club Kit for March. Now, the great thing about these club kits, they are super reasonably priced. Um, I believe it is, I want to say $7 plus shipping. I hope that I have that right. It will be um, listed down below here on the video on YouTube, but so amazing. So I am a huge, huge fan of these club kits. I think they're awesome. Okay, so I have taped my frames together. This is a little bit better example of how I did that. I taped them together, ran them through, embossed them. You can see that little piece I popped out. I've actually die cut that from a contra or a, another color of cardstock just to make the frame a little more interesting for my second card. This card's even simpler, but I don't know. I might like it even more. Um, I wanted another card example with these frames. I wanted to be able to use all four frames. I did use all four frames from the small die of the month. And this really ended up even being cuter maybe. I don't know. I love both of them. Like I said, I like the pandas, but we're going to put the inside panel after we've stamped it with a greeting from the Simon Says Stamp Handwritten Love greeting set. We'll put that directly on my card base. Again, that pattern paper is from the Really Rainbow Lawn Fawn uh, 6x6 paper pack. We're going to pop the frame up with foam adhesive again because I really think that foam adhesive makes a huge difference and really gives the frames the dimension that I was looking for. And then we're gonna put the sitting panda on top of the frame like it's sitting up there. So we've got the sitting body, the layering pieces for the feet. The arms are the same pieces as before, but this time they go down in front. I couldn't use the sitting panda for the other style of card because there would be no arms to hold up the frame, if that makes sense, because the arms are down in front on this guy. So I had to use the standing panda for the other one. So here's the sitting one. Again, replacing the black areas uh, around the eyes, the tips of the ears, the nose, and for this guy, he's going to have, or this little girl, I guess I want to say, I made her into a girl. We're going to use the red bow and glue that to the top of her head. Just like before, we're going to take a white pin and add detail to everything. Um, the detail on the bow, detail on any of the black areas on the panda, because I feel like it really just brings that detail the die cut up a notch. It really makes it so much more interesting to look at. I added white dots around the frame earlier. I think I was talking about something else and I didn't mention that as I did it, but little white dots around the frame also really add a fun decorative element. And really the final thing we have to do here is put this on a card base. I did trim this background down to four inches by five and a quarter. So it's gonna be slightly smaller than A2, meaning when I put this on my white top fold card base, there's gonna be a nice white border all the way around. And then one thing that I forgot on my first card that I, we're gonna do now is pink in the cheeks. You definitely don't have to do this, but I think it adds some nice character to the pandas. So I'm gonna take R00 Copic marker and add little um, circles for the cheeks and then blend that out with a colorless blender. And it looks kind of wet and messy when you first do it, but as the alcohol ink dries, it really softens the cheeks to a nice soft pink so they're not so harsh. And that'll add a nice little rosy hue to all of my pandas. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this set of two cards featuring the frame dies from the Spellbinders March 2018 Small Die of the Month Club. I highly, highly recommend their club kits. Um, I am linking to some past club kit projects that I've done at the end of this video. They are incredible, it's a great value, and you get some amazing dies to add to your collection every month.
The supplies I use to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Spellbinders, Kit of the Month clubs that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.